how do you think about danger? Do you worry about it? Do you think you could sense it when it was near upon you? Or would you be oblivious to it? Have you ever thought about what it might be like to be in a dangerous situation with a group of people, strangers, how they would perceive the danger differently? Some would have anxieties disproportionate to the threat at hand, while others would be checked out and completely oblivious to the danger right in front of them. There are sayings in our culture, in our society, that seem to just roll off the tip of the tongue at the right moment. Things like, hey, you got to be in it to win it. Or, no guts, no glory. Some of them seem to make no sense at all. Especially the one about a frog in a pot in the boiling water, being desensitized to it as the temperature rises to a fatal boiling level. That was always a hard one to understand, particularly as a kid. How could the frog not want to get out of the hot pot of water? And of course, no one actually put a frog in a boiling pot of water to find out. What is the meaning of that story? Well, it's a warning. Donald Trump has been the dominant cultural figure in the United States since 2015. It is a remarkable thing. And the truth of the matter is, it is not possible for somebody so toxic, so sick, so venal, to be the dominant figure in a society and not have it have dramatic implications, almost all of them terrible. And that says nothing about putting that person in charge through the executive office of a democratic republic, as was the case with Donald Trump between 2017 in 2021. The results of that were a disaster without parallel for America. Hundreds of thousands of Americans were killed by government incompetence. Donald Trump's incompetence, Jared Kushner's incompetence during the COVID crisis. Millions and millions of livelihoods were lost because of stupidity, because of unpreparedness. In the end, Donald Trump is somebody who coddled dictators, undermined American ideals, and stoked a cold civil war between the American people. And for all of that, he was defeated. And then the story begins. At least the parts that will be remembered by history. The awfulness of Trump's presidency will be a blip in history because whatever it was, it is simply a predicate to what comes next. And what is developing, what is forming, what lays visible on the horizon to some and still invisible to others is a gathering threat of immense proportions. It is a dangerous storm. It is the type of storm that has been seen before. It has been seen within a human lifetime. Incredibly, Donald Trump has manifested the darkness that so many Americans thought was extinguished, harnessed it, rekindled it, 
and brought it to life and is ready to turn it into an inferno. There is a question at hand now, and it cannot be avoided. There is a revanchist, belligerent minority that can be whipped into a state of ecstasy and fervor by language that has no comparison in the modern era of American politics whatsoever. The language harkens back even to a time that predates Jim Crow. Even at the heights of America's most alarming and specific and evil acts of Jim Crow racism that played out on national television, there was not an overt appeal to the lowest, basest dehumanization impulses that we have seen being made like Donald Trump has made them in 2023. You have to go back even further, further than Bull Connor. You have to go back to Adolf Hitler to hear the rhetoric that is being heard come from the mouth of Donald Trump. And what is so frightening is these are not musings shouted into a mirror by an addled and disordered person. This person that we are talking about is not Paul Gosar. He is not a congressional loon on the fringe of power. He is on the verge of becoming, once again, the Republican nominee, even though he faces 92 felony counts for serious crimes. Donald Trump is shouting, not into the wind, but to a galvanized mass of supporters who will do anything for him and to the country for him. There is a question at hand that we should start talking about as a nation, which is, are we prepared to defend Americanism from this threat? What is the threat? It is illustrated and articulated perfectly as a matter of fact in a Washington Post story that details what a Trump rally has become, what it is, what excites, what titillates, and what motivates a Trump voter. I'm going to read from the story so you can appreciate the full magnitude of the danger. The danger is close at hand now. And every American who loves the country and has any appreciation of history whatsoever should be called right now to appreciate that it will need defending. Durham, New Hampshire. Republican polling leader Donald Trump approvingly quoted autocrats Vladimir Putin of Russia and Viktor Orban of Hungary, part of an ongoing effort to deflect from his criminal prosecutions and spin alarms about eroding democracy against President Biden. His speech at a presidential campaign rally here on Sunday also reprised 
dehumanizing language targeting immigrants that historians have likened to past authoritarians, including a reference that some civil rights advocates and experts in extremism have compared to Adolf Hitler's fixation on blood purity. And he used the term, quote, hostages, end quote, to describe people charged with violent crimes in the January 6th, 2021 attack at the U.S. Capitol. The comments came as experts, historians, and political opponents have voiced growing alarm about Trump's rhetoric, ideas, and emerging plans for a second term, pointing to parallels to past and present authoritarian leaders. Quote, Donald Trump sees American democracy as a sham and he wants to convince his followers to see it that way too, end quote, said Jennifer Mercia, a professor at Texas A&M University who researches democracy and rhetoric. Quote, Putin hates Western values like democracy and the rule of law. So does Trump, end quote. Trump quoted Putin the dictatorial Russian president who invaded neighboring Ukraine, criticizing the criminal charges against Trump, who was accused in four separate cases of falsifying business records in a hush money scheme, mishandling classified documents, and trying to overturn the 2020 election results. In the quotation, Vladimir Putin agreed with Trump's own attempts to portray the prosecutions as politically motivated. Quote, it shows the rottenness of the American political system, which cannot pretend to teach others about democracy, end quote. Trump quoted Putin saying in the speech, Trump added, quote, they're all laughing at us, end quote. He went on to align himself with Orban, the Hungarian prime minister who has amassed functionally autocratic power through controlling the media and changing the country's constitution. Orban has presented his leadership as a model of an illiberal state and has opposed immigration for leading to, quote, mixed race, end quote, Europeans. Democratic world leaders have sought to isolate Orban for eroding civil liberties and bolstering ties with Putin. But Trump calls him highly respected and can welcome his praise as the man who can save the Western world. In the speech, Trump also repeated his own inflammatory language against undocumented immigrants by accusing them of, quote, poisoning the blood of our country, end quote a phrase that immigrant groups and civil rights advocates have condemned as reminiscent as Hitler in his book, Mein Kampf, in which he told Germans to, quote, care for the purity of their own blood, end quote, by eliminating Jews. The crowd of thousands in a college arena cheered Trump's recitation of an anti-immigrant poem called the snake that he has repeated on the campaign trail and popularized since the 2016 campaign. The danger of the moment is the response of the crowd to a poem that dehumanizes people who are precisely like the grandparents of the people bloodthirstily cheering a poem that could have been recited by Joseph Goebbels at Nuremberg in 1938 in the weeks leading up to the Kristallnacht. Anybody who thinks that Donald Trump is simply an extension of politics as usual, a bit coarser a little cruder, is a fool. 
Kristen Welker at NBC News did her level best to ask Lindsey Graham to ask him almost plaintively to condemn the language. She gave him every opportunity. And then Lindsey Graham blurted the quiet part out loud. He doesn't care about the language. And he doesn't care about the threat. What Lindsey Graham cares about is the pristineness of the demagoguery and the cleanliness of the route to political power, no matter what. A funny, affable man who was once known throughout the country as John McCain's sidekick has become a snarling old man in the service of a fascist cause, menacing America with his indifference, his intolerance, and his blatant embrace of fascistic rhetoric. Lindsey Graham is done apologizing. I understand that. Lindsey Graham thinks he's winning. And that's why he doesn't care. But you should care because always the words come first. Always the dehumanization comes. Donald Trump is telling America, all of us, and he is telling the world, every one of them, and every hostile world leader who he is. They understand it perfectly. We have to stop this or we lose the country. We have less than a year to all do it together.